Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Sharp YouTube channel. Now before we get into the video of setting up the database for Superbase platform, I would like to talk about my brand new course that I'm working on currently. It's called Superbase for iOS Developer and the Complete Bootcamp. Now this course is currently in development. So as soon as I finish the content for different sections, you can get access to the course. You can see that you can pre-order the course for $89. Once the course is completed, it will be launched at $149. So check out all the content that we'll be covering, keeping in mind that the currently the content is being developed. So right now you get access to how to integrate with Superbase database, but Eventually, we'll be covering MV pattern, how to integrate MV pattern, relationships, authentication, storage, edge functions, as well as real-time API. So this is going to be the complete course for learning Superbase for iOS applications. So if you want, you can pre-enroll or pre-order this course. And as soon as new sections are published, you will get access to them or you can subscribe and become a member and get access to all the courses available on Azam Sharp School. Thank you so much. Let's go back to the video. All right, everyone, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we need to do is to set up our database on Superbase website. So make sure you go to superbase.com and make sure that you are signed in. You can see that I'm already signed in. That's why it's showing me the link to the dashboard. But if you're not signed in, you will see sign in or login, and you can do that. Let's go to dashboard. Now, if you're using Superbase for the first time, you are going to see this dashboard screen, which will be completely empty. There will be no projects over here. Uh, you can see that I already have this project called to-do list, but since you are logging in for the first time, you won't really see any to-do list or anything like that. Not to worry we can always go ahead and create a brand new project. So let's go ahead and create a new project by clicking on new project. Choose an organization. You can add multiple organizations. I'm just going to select my name over here. This is Adam Sharp at Gmail. And what will be the project name? Well, it can be anything. So I'm just going to call it budget app. Okay. Next thing you need to come up with some sort of a database password. So this is really important that you put a strong database password, because if you don't put strong database password, well, it's not really going to allow you to create the database. So let's go ahead and put something. There we go. It's pretty strong. And make sure that you save the password also somewhere secure. And now I can go ahead and say, create new project. Okay. There we go. It's creating the new project. Now, just to make sure that you understand that we are creating over here a new project, it's not going to create any tables right now. So it's just going to create a project for you. And in this project, you can go ahead and add a database. You can go ahead and add like, uh, uh, you know, other things that are related to Superbase, like a file storage system, authentication, all of those different things you can add to this project. And one of the things that we want to set up for our project is the database. So you can see that it's still saying setting up project. Sometime it can take a little bit of time. It will give you this project API keys. So make sure that you have the project API keys. Okay, there we go. And if we, so right now it is set up now. The budget app project is set up correctly. And the first thing we need to do as you can see, there are many different things you can do. Authentication, storage, edge functions, real-time database. So a lot of things you can do. But what we want to do is we want to get started with our database. We want to set up our database. So let's see if we can actually access it from here also. You can see database, authentication, storage, edge function, real-time. I can go to database over here also. So let's go to database. It will take you to a page which says database tables. Now, there is no table over here, right? I mean, we just 
created this database, so we don't have any tables. And I can go ahead and create a new table. So all of this stuff you can do with using this really nice looking user interface. Let's create a new table. The first thing is the name of the table. So what will be the name of the table? Well, we're creating a budgets application. We'll be storing, storing budgets as well as their expenses. So I'll probably call this budgets. So budgets can be any kind of budget that you're creating. Maybe you're creating a budget for a vacation, groceries, entertainment, dining out. These are all different kinds of budgets. If you want to provide some description, you can. Uh, I can provide some examples like groceries, groceries, uh, vacation budget. Uh, you can have entertainment, entertainment budget, and so on. Next up, we have enable row access or row level security. Uh, we're going to uncheck this for now because we're just starting out and we want anyone to write to the database, anyone to read from the database, to delete from the database and update. So keep in mind that we will enable that later, but right now uh, we're just allowing anonymous access to our table. That's what we're doing, all right? Enable real time, not really. We're not really building a chat application, so we don't really want to do real time right now. Now keep in mind that the table name I'm giving is budgets. And why have I named this all small case? Well, you can name them anything you want, but the Postgres, since it's gonna create a Postgres table, and this will be a Postgres database, the convention for Postgres is that you use lower casing. And these are the different columns that you see, all right? So this is where you can go ahead and create different things, create different columns. The first column that is already added, it's the ID column, which is in teacher type, it's a primary key. So that's already there. You don't have to mess around with that. Another column is created at, and the default value of the created at is now, so this means when you're inserting a record, you don't have to pass in created at. Uh, it will by default use whatever the value of now is. Now is a function and it's going to return you the current date and time on the server. So the server will be located at different locations, so whatever the time of the server is. Now I can go ahead and add another column. I'm gonna say name for the name of the budget. And the name of the budget will be, well, it will be work Varchar, um, uh, you can select text or Varchar. I'm just gonna select Varchar over here. Do, do you allow null values? Um, well, that's a default, so we don't really have a default value for the name. Name can be anything like vacations, entertainment, and so on. Let's go ahead and check out what this is. Is nullable, is unique, define an array, is not nullable. So that is a field that is required, all right? You can see that the ID field is marked with identity. That means that it's going to be incremented on its own. So we got the name, Varchar, uh, Varkar, and then default value is nothing over here. And we have also make sure that it's not nullable. You have to provide some value. The other column I want to add is the limit. I mean, you can call this limit, you can call this amount or the budget, whatever. Limit means that if you are creating a budget for groceries, what's the limit for that particular budget? $500 a month, $600, $200. And now I can look at different things over here. Float four, float eight. You know, you have different things over here that you can actually assign. Uh, let's go with float four for now. Again, this will not be nullable. So we it is required. So the only two columns we have added is name and limit. Now you can add more columns if you want to, if you have other things related to the budget. But for us, name and limit is fine. I'm gonna press the save button and it's going to create a brand new table with four columns, ID, created at, name and limit. So you can see over there on the message on the top right corner, Usually it's not that slow. I mean, it, it works perfectly fine. Okay. So there we go. We, we got our table called name uh, budgets. 
description is appearing. Let's go ahead and see what these are. Edit table, view table, uh, view table. Okay, trying to see if we can view the table. All right, table is currently empty. Obviously, we just created the table, so this is uh, expected. We can also insert some data into the table if you want to just check out and just put some dummy data in there. Obviously, when we are creating our Surf UI application, we will allow our app to insert the data. But I find it really nice that I can just insert some dummy columns. So insert new row, okay. Uh, ID is automatically generated, so we don't have to do anything over there. Create at is also fine. Let's go ahead and create at least like two rows. What will be the limit? Let's say 500. So we're adding groceries. The limit is $500. And I can add another one. Let's call it, you know, vacation. And what's the limit? Let's say $2,000. Okay, so now we have added two different budgets and you can see that since the ID column is a primary key, it's an identity column, you can see these things are assigned, the numbers are assigned. And the same goes for created ads, some default date has been assigned. Um, now don't freak out about the created ad date because it may not match what the date on your computer will be. And the reason is that it is the time from the server. So your time may not be the time that is shown over here, not to worry, because your server will be hosted in probably a different region of the world, different part of the world, and the time might be different, right, from, from your current local time. So that's why these time will be different. We got the name, we got the limit, 500, 2000, that's pretty cool. And that is it. That's all we need to do for now to set up our or configure our database on Superbase. Now we need to connect and integrate our database, which is on Superbase, in our Swift UI application. So that is what we'll be doing next.